Hello, my name is Holden Osmus, CCA agronomist and seed treatment specialist for Osmus Farm Supply. Before I jump into the importance of seed treatment, I want to briefly explain the disease triangle. In order for a pest or a pathogen to survive, there needs to be three components. There needs to be the host plant, your pathogen, and compatible environment. Now since growers really don't have control over the climate or factors such as weather, seed treatment can be really important to be used to help eliminate or to suppress the effects of those external factors. Now there are four key diseases that really impact soybeans. Fusarium, Pythium, Phytophthora, and Rhizoctonia. Each of these four diseases kind of come into effect at different temperatures of the soil and different conditions. To break down these temperature ranges, I'm going to be showing you a graphic provided by DuPont Pioneer. The four main diseases that impact soybean yield all thrive in different environmental conditions. In cooler soil temperatures, lower than 73 degrees Fahrenheit, Fusarium and Pythium are normally present in cold, moist soils. As soil temperatures start to warm up but remain saturated, is when you start to see Phytophthora's effects. In the drier, unsaturated soils, you start to see Rhizoctonia. The point I'm trying to make is that there's always going to be a disease present in your fields. That's why it's crucial to have a fungicide seed treatment applied to your soybeans to help control or suppress the effects of these diseases. The importance of treating soybean seed with insecticide treatments is to protect the seed from early season pests. Multiple pests can be controlled with seed treatments. The most common early season pests are the bean leaf beetle, the true white grub, and the seed corn maggot. While in the larva stage, these pests feed on roots or germinating seeds, causing damage to the embryo. This may lead to delayed development or possibly the plant's death. The use of an insecticide seed treatment will reduce the populations of these pests to help the seeds emerge more evenly. The insecticide seed treatment products available on the market for soybeans even have some systemic control of early season soybean aphids. It's crucial for an insecticide seed treatment to be applied to your soybeans to help reduce the damage of insects both at early season and in season to increase photosynthetic intake which can lead to higher yields. The next level of control to consider when applying seed treatment products to soybeans would be to control soybean cyst nematodes. Uh, soybean cyst nematodes right now are the lead cause of yield loss, estimating about 120 million bushels of soybeans annually are lost due to damage to the soybean cyst nematode. They're a very kind of fast growing pest, anywhere from 24 to 30 days is where the full life cycle of a nematode can take place. So it's really important to control them because a population can get out of hand very quickly. The next concern uh, with the soybean cyst nematodes is that they're starting to show a resistance to the PI88788 trait, uh, which is the common variety added into soybean genetics to help control uh, the soybean cyst nematode on a natural level. Uh, in the state of Iowa, there's actually showing about 56% of the population of soybean cyst nematodes are resistant to the PI88788 trait. So a big concern with the soybean cyst nematodes as well as they are proven to kind of be the catalyst between the soil-borne Fusarium vergulliform and the eventual infection of your soybeans with sudden death syndrome or SDS, which is the next level of control I'd like to start to talk about. SDS is in second place behind the soybean cyst nematodes for the leading damage to your soybean yields. SDS has both above and below ground features that are easy to distinguish. Uh, the above ground features, you can see yellow to brown lesions in between the veins of your leaves, uh, which leads to eventual dying of the soybean plant. Uh, below ground, you start to see uh, the main causes of root rotting disease. So you start to see brown to woody tissues, some lesions on your roots, and that's kind of the real cause of SDS. Now there are genetic tolerances that are available through your trait packages on your soybeans, but sometimes that isn't always the best level of protection you can have. Now, the SDS seed treatment products aren't necessarily silver bullets. Uh, there isn't anything out there right now that can completely eradicate SDS from your fields, but what it could do, let's say for example, 
you have on a scale of one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best, you have a product that's like a five in SDS tolerance. Uh, if you treat it with an SDS product, it might get it to you know, a seven or a six. What it'll do is it'll help control the SDS to increase the tolerance on your soybeans, leading to better production and higher yields. Through our trials at Osmus Farm Supply, we've seen consistent positive results when pairing a Brady Rhizobia inoculant with your active ingredient seed treatment package. There are multiple inoculants available on the market, anywhere including from Pioneer's PPST 120 Plus to Optimize, Excalibur, Tag Team, Signum One Bioinducer, and many others. With the increased concern of neonicotinoid insecticides and its impact on bee cultures, it's crucial that we practice proper stewardship methods to preserve our active ingredients. The greatest way that we can preserve our seed treatments is to reduce the effects of dust off. So any time treated seed is either handled or moved, there's a potential for tiny portions of the treated seed to be eroded off in the form of dust. Now when you're transferring your seed from a tender to the planter or through the vacuum systems on most modern planters, there's a potential for off-target movement. Uh, when that dust settles on something like a flower, it poses a threat to pollinator health. Um, so why is that important? Well, bees currently impact approximately $217 billion in food production worldwide. So it's crucial that we maintain a healthy bee population. Growers ask commonly how early they can have soybean seed treated. It really depends on the type of treatment that you're going to be putting on your seed. With some of the inoculants, their lifespan is limited to 75 days all the way up to 120 days. Although not required, it's still recommended that a fungicide seed treatment is applied to seeds planted later in the season. As I discussed earlier in this video, yield robbing diseases thrive in different soil conditions. Although conditions may seem favorable, please remember that Phytophthora and Rhizoctonia could damage untreated seed. Another common question that I'm asked during the season is if there are any products available to treat over an upstream treated corn seed. There are multiple products available that help with nutrient uptake, such as Ascend and Commence. The thing that I would caution growers is that when applied over an upstream treated corn seed, some mechanical damages to the germ could take place, leading in lower germination rates. With an upstream treated corn seed, anything that's treated on top of that seed could void replant policies. If you have any questions on the topics that I've covered today, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedules to watch this video.